The scientists and inventors who created the technologies of the ancient world are no longer alive. That means we can't ask them about their techniques or ideas. In a lot of cases, they didn't leave any written records behind because they didn't have a written language. All of this leaves us with a lot of mysteries when it comes to ancient technologies. Mysteries you'll hear about in this video. The invention of the cannon was a major military breakthrough. With a cannon, an army could break down the walls of a castle that once seemed impenetrable. Based on that, you'd probably assume that the cannon wasn't invented until the Middle Ages. But it was actually designed 2,300 years ago by Archimedes. While Leonardo da Vinci often gets credited with inventing a steam-powered cannon called an Architonaire during the late 15th century, the Italian Renaissance master was, by his own admission, working off an earlier blueprint created by Archimedes. In the absence of gunpowder, which hadn't yet been invented, Archimedes' cannon was a long bronze tube packed full of round stones. Heat would be applied to a water container at one end of the cannon, which produced steam, and then the steam would propel the stones out of the tube. The Archimedes cannon was used when his hometown of Syracuse was attacked by the Romans in the year 241 BCE, but then appeared to be forgotten by history until da Vinci picked up where Archimedes left off more than 1,500 years later. If you were asked to design a church or a temple, your first thought probably wouldn't be to carve one directly into the ground and make it out of a single block of rock. The amount of labor required to perform such a task would be prohibitive in the extreme. Nevertheless, someone did precisely that in Lalibela, Ethiopia, a very long time ago. You won't find any other churches anywhere else in the world that look like these rock-hewn works of beauty. The most famous and impressive of them is the Church of St. George, which archaeologists believe was carved from the inside out and finished with a distinctive cross shape at the top. There are 11 rock-hewn churches in total in Lalibela, all of which are connected by secret tunnels and appear to have been built between the 12th and 13th centuries. Quite how people living hundreds of years ago managed to create structures like this working in almost total darkness is unknown. It stands to reason that they had some form of technology to help them, but we have no idea what that technology might have been. Cisterns might sound like a strange thing to get excited about, but then again, we suppose that depends on the cisterns. In this case, we're talking about the ancient Roman cisterns at the world-famous archaeological site of Carthage in Tunisia. This network of cisterns, all of which are more than 300 feet long and were once connected to the world's longest aqueduct, fed the entire city during its peak years. It's amazing they're still standing at all. Over time, they've been partially destroyed by invading barbarians, used as temporary barns, stables, and even houses during the Middle Ages, and been scavenged for stone to use as building materials. Despite all that, it's impossible not to be impressed even today when you stand inside them and take in the sheer scale of the cisterns. To think that people living over 2,000 years ago built these cisterns and had sufficient understanding of hydraulics to connect them to an even larger water network is mind-blowing. Fortunately, what's left of the structures is now afforded a degree of government protection to ensure that they don't suffer any more damage than they've already endured. Speaking of the ancient Romans and their mighty aqueducts and pipe systems, they're also often credited with the creation of the Patara pipes in Turkey. There's some debate over whether they truly deserve that credit. It's true to say that they run between former Roman settlements in the area, but there are some who believe that the Romans positioned their settlements close to the pipes, rather than building the pipes after the establishment of the settlements. They don't look much like any other pipes known to have been built by the Romans, and nor is there any Roman record of their creation. As the Romans were generally fond of trumpeting their own achievements, that absence of any supporting evidence might be telling. 
In 1993, an ancient Roman pillar was found in Patara, and upon that pillar was a series of inscriptions detailing Roman activities in the city. The inscriptions mention the creation of a road network and the founding of a few cities, but nothing about the pipes. This raises the possibility that the majestic Patara pipes are actually the work of an older civilization, perhaps even one we have no knowledge of. The small village of Lepakshi in India isn't exactly a world-famous tourist destination, but perhaps it should be. There's a whole world of ancient wonders to be found here, and the technology that went into creating them has never been adequately explained. The enormous human footprint at the start of Sita's trail is a wonder all of its own. It's three feet long, far bigger than any human footprint has any right to be, and its origins are unknown. Stranger still is the hanging column. This ornately carved and decorated column doesn't touch the floor. Local tour guides often pass a newspaper beneath it to prove it isn't secured to the ground and so it seems it really does float. During India's days of British colonialism, British engineers are said to have tried to move the column to find out what kept it in place, but they failed in their efforts. The laws of gravity simply don't seem to apply to it. Elsewhere, there are strange patterns of circles carved into stone, with smaller circles arranged around a larger one at the center. They're presumably intended to symbolize something, perhaps the sun, but nobody knows who made them, when, or how. Murdoff's Gold Disc, which can be found in the State Museum of Lower Saxony in Germany, is an archaeological artifact that spent a lot of its recent history being badly misunderstood. The flat, round disc was found in a field by a farmer in East Friesland in 1910. The farmer thought it was pretty but worthless, and so he gave it to his young son as a toy. It wasn't until an antique dealer visited the house several years later that they realized their lucky discovery might be valuable. The antique dealer bought the disc and sold it on to a research team, who carried out extensive investigations. According to the experts, the artifact is around 3,500 years old. That makes it a product of the Bronze Age, it's no ordinary decorative disc, either. It's an ancient astronomical calendar. The markings on the disc show the movements of planets through the sky, and what's really amazing is that there are nine different planets recorded. History tells us that Uranus wasn't spotted until 1781, and Neptune wasn't found until 1843, with dwarf planet Pluto following in 1930. And yet, it seems that whoever made this disc was already well aware of them. The Kyaktiyo Stupa in Myanmar's Thetan district defies physics. One look at it is enough to tell you that it ought to fall off the cliff it's delicately perched atop, but it never does. For more than two and a half thousand years, this gold-painted sculpture-topped boulder has teetered on the edge without bowing to the inevitable force of gravity, despite the fact that there's nothing holding it in place. It's not tied to anything, nor is it physically secured to the cliff beneath it. The stupa is a Buddhist icon and a popular pilgrimage site. Legend has it that the reason it never rolls over and falls is that it balances on one single strand of the Buddha's hair. Another local legend says that an ancient king used supernatural powers to pull the boulder out of the ocean, build a temple on top of it, and then had it coated in gold leaf. Someone obviously painted it and built the temple, but the story about it being magically dragged out of the ocean is a little far-fetched. The unlikely landmark is also the site of a once-a-year festival, which sees it surrounded by exactly 90,000 candles at the end of every march. Making highly unusual stupas must have been a recurring theme among Buddhists a very long time ago. Afghanistan is an Islamic country today, but it was Buddhist in its distant past. 
The Bamiyan Buddhas used to stand as testimony to this fact, but they were desecrated by fundamentalists in 2001. Now the country's oldest surviving Buddhist monument is the stupa of Takht i Rustam. It doesn't look much like Kyak Tio stupa in Myanmar, though. In fact, it has more in common with the rock hewn churches in Ethiopia that we looked at earlier on, as well as being carved directly into a single piece of rock, just as the Lalibela churches were. This stupa is surrounded by an enormous trench that runs 25 feet deep. Legend has it that the Harmika building at the top of the stupa once contained relics of the Buddha, which were guarded by the monks who lived in the tiny cells right at the bottom of the structure. Archaeologists believe that the stupa was created around 1,700 years ago, so life at the bottom, where almost no light could reach, must have been extremely dark and gloomy. We're returning to India now, where we find the astonishing Bedza Caves not far from the city of Pune. This elaborate cave system, which is all part of the same Buddhist shrine and was carved directly into the rocks using unknown technology, is just over 2,000 years old. Carving into any form of rock with this level of precision and detail would be difficult, but the walls of this shrine are made of basalt. Shaping basalt using the hand tools and techniques of 2,000 years ago ought to have been impossible, and yet here, the temples are in defiance of the established historical narrative. It's no wonder that they're still held in such high regard. The shrine has never been abandoned, and is still attended by Buddhists for worship and special services even to this day. The only clue as to who might have built these structures is a single inscription that reads, Gift of Pushyanka, son of Ananda Seti from Nashik. Unfortunately, that doesn't really tell us anything. We might never get to the bottom of how these caves were created, but we can still enjoy them as a thing of beauty. Even among all the skyscrapers in the modern Chinese city of Hangzhou, Baochou Pagoda attracts your attention when you cast your eyes across the skyline. It's an ancient mystery, sticking out from the landscape like a sore thumb. Archaeologists and historians believe it was built during the 10th century, but they have no way of knowing for sure. Until comparatively recently, it looked even more majestic than it does now. The tower used to be 150 feet tall, but a botched restoration project in 1933 saw it lose almost a third of its original height. Fortunately, there are a few photos of Bao Chu Pagoda that were taken before the restoration project, so from those, we can get an idea of how it used to look. You might be asking what makes this tower so unusual. The answer is that it doesn't have an internal staircase. If you want to get to the top of this tower, you have to climb its exterior, and there's no easy way to do it. The lack of a staircase leaves us wondering how it was built and, more importantly, why it was built. No good answers to either of those questions exist. We've already covered the fact that India is covered in beautiful and mysterious temples, and we've also mentioned that not all of them get the attention and curiosity they deserve. You can add the Ratnagiri Temple Complex in Odisha to that list. There's no one standout piece of architecture here, Everything you look at within the complex is incredible, and the process that went into building it are almost unimaginable. Historians believe that the first of the temples, shrines, monasteries, and stupas that exist at Ratnagiri was built during the 6th century, and were then added to over a period of 1,000 years, with the most recent temple at the site built during the 1500s. It's not without good reason that the entire area has become known as the Hill of Jewels. Even though the site is enormous, Ratnagiri managed to remain undiscovered to Western explorers until 1905. Even after that, there wasn't a full archaeological excavation there until 1961. The truth is, we still don't know the full history of Ratnagiri, 
and there may still be hidden details that have escaped our attention. It's high time that modern archaeologists returned to the site and started a new research project. Were the ancient Romans capable of creating flexible glass thousands of years ago? That seems too absurd an idea to be true, but there are historical records that suggest they could. Both Pliny the Elder and Petronius, two of the most respected writers of the ancient world, claimed that the Romans had a formula for making bendable, almost unbreakable glass. Records of the material from lesser-known writers also begin to appear in the time of Tiberius Caesar during the first century. It seems that it may have been the emperor himself who put a stop to the production of the product. He believed it would become more valuable than gold and could destabilize the entire Roman economy. So he decided to pass on the enormous technological opportunities it represented. If the Romans really could make flexible glass, perhaps it had something to do with the steady supply of boric acid they could take from the steam vents of the Tuscan Marima close to Rome. Adding boric acid to a regular glass mixture would make a type of glass that was extremely difficult to break. It still wouldn't have been flexible, but perhaps the Romans knew something that we don't. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!